an Android phone for under $100? Let's check this out. Dave Taylor here, and I usually look at high-end gear, but sometimes I like to look at entry-level and budget products. That's exactly what this is. This interesting phone is the new mobile G1 Android smartphone. And yeah, it has a really amazing price tag, but it has a lot of really cool technology in it too. So let's start there. And let's start with an unboxing, right? So obviously phone's already out of the box and I kind of prepped this so we know what's going on. So this is the SIM removal tool. Then it actually comes with, this is actually very cool, comes with a clear TPU case all ready to use and it comes with a screen protector. So all of this is in the box, which makes this a really nice gift for someone because they have everything that otherwise you'd normally go and buy as an accessory. Charger, and it comes with a micro USB cable for charging your phone. Now, the one thing it doesn't have that a lot of phones have in the box, doesn't have any earbuds. So if that's an issue, that's something you'll wanna know about. But let's be honest, earbuds are super inexpensive. You can pick them up at the gas station for 10 bucks. So I don't see that's a particularly big deal. Now, the phone itself is powered by a MediaTek 1.3 gigahertz quad core CPU, and it's a bit slim on the memory. It has 16 gig of storage and a one gig RAM, but it does support a micro SD card, which you can add to it, which will then give you up to an additional 64 gig of storage. Now, that's not the 256 gig of the top end Galaxy or top end iPhone, but this is also not a thousand dollar smartphone. So there's trade-offs. And I think that having a little less storage and having a whole lot more money in your wallet is not a bad trade-off. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about it because it actually has a 5.7 inch HD plus screen running at 1440 by 720 which means it's a 720p not 1080p HD screen but honestly when I've used it and watched YouTube videos and stuff it's perfectly fine now the rear camera is an 8 megapixel camera so that's decent and the front is 5 megapixels plenty enough for your selfies it's okay I don't judge you <laughs> let me give you a couple of demos so these first two are photos that I took at the Denver Art Museum and the lighting was pretty tough so this was not a nice bright outdoor shot and I think the camera did pretty well with it now I also took a video and as you can see it's pretty crisp it's a pretty nice looking video and you know it works perfectly well. You can import it with your um, phone to different devices. You can share it on social. And here's what's cool is the video is actually at 1080p. So it's 1920 by 1080. And what that means is that the camera is recording at a higher resolution than the screen can show. So that's actually pretty smart on their part. Let's see. Additionally, there is a fingerprint ID on the back and I'll show you it's a super fast sensor. So you see it's locked, I touch it, it's unlocked. That's pretty easy to work with. I like fingerprint ID. And here, you know, the real thing, the real champ on this phone is you look at it and you're like, that's a little thick for a smartphone. And it also, I can tell you, it's a little bit heavy because it has this phenomenal 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That is a monster battery. This gives this about a two day instead of one day on a charge, right? Depending on use, et cetera. But the company says that it gives it 50 hours of talk time, 50 hours. That's a long time to be on the phone, <laughs> which you're probably not gonna be on all at once. But suffice to say, there's a chunky phone here, but it's it, because it has a whole lot of battery. Most modern phones are about half this much battery capacity, so this is really nice. If you're sick of constantly having to charge your phone, this solves that problem. Now, it's also running Android 8.1 Oreo, which is good. It's not quite Android 9, but one presumes that will show up at some point. But it does have Bluetooth 4.0, and the latest generation of Bluetooth is 5.0, and that's important because if you want to get some fancy wireless earbuds or something like that, most of those require, well, they don't require, but they'll work best with Bluetooth 5. And so this is a pretty old version of Bluetooth. They just, I guess they just found a really inexpensive chip that could give them the Bluetooth 4.0. I would expect at some point that'll be upgraded, but for now, the G1's on a Bluetooth 4.0. That to me is possibly one of its biggest limitations, depending on how you use it. 
Now, they have a surface on the back. It's not super smooth. The intention is that it actually is supposed to be slightly less slippery. I don't really find that to be the case, but <laughs> maybe you will. I don't know. Um, it still has a nice feel to it. And then in terms of the ports, on the very top, you have the micro USB for charging, and you have a 3.5 millimeter Let the Angels Sing actual AUX port that you can plug in headphones or a speaker. On the right-hand side, you have power and then volume up and down, and that's it. The other sides have no buttons. And the back has the camera and the fingerprint sensor, and you can pop the back off because it's a dual SIM phone and it supports that micro SD card too, right? So this is something where if you're used to really expensive phones, this will cause great anxiety. I am tearing the phone apart, right? See that? I am pulling the back off. It is actually designed to do this, so there is no reason to panic. And what you see is that you have two, uh, let's see, where are they? So... I'm thinking that these are both the SIM slots, and then this is where you'd put the micro SD card. I might be not exactly right there, but you can also see there's a pretty chunky battery here. And of course, now it's a little thinner, but who the heck is gonna use their phone without the back on it, right? So pretty easy to work with, and the dual SIM is a great feature. I really, if you're carrying around two phones, and I see a lot of people do this, it's just like, Get a phone that supports two numbers. That's super easy. So back's back on and it's a dual 4G SIM slot. So that works super easy. Really nothing else I want to share with you. I'm really impressed with this phone. I think that for the price, this is a really amazing piece of technology. This would be terrific for your teen or tween kid or for grandma who constantly loses things. You know what? $99 phone. If you're using a um, pay as you go program or plan, instead of using one of their junky little feature phones buy this and you've got this it's yours you have this forever if you want to upgrade to a full plan someday just drop in a different sim if you know you otherwise you can just pay as you go with a much nicer phone that does much more so all this left to talk about is the actual price i guess i sort of foreshadowed that at the very beginning but before i get to the price can i ask can you subscribe to my channel really appreciate when you do that and if you do use really entry-level budget phones, leave me a message and let me know why and what phone you're using and how it's working. So just leave a comment and I'll even respond. Very nice. Okay, so this is the new mobile G1 Android phone and it is $99.99 at newmobile.com. Yes, it is under $100 and it is a very nice phone. This is a really smart piece of technology and if you're looking for a second phone, but seriously, you get a phone with two SIMs like this, or you're looking for something just as a, like a test phone to work with, or you just don't have a whole lot of money to burn on your devices, this is a really interesting alternative. So I say check it out, and with that, I will catch you in my next video.